So I want to introduce you to this alkalarian lifestyle, 15 steps to pH. Well, pH doesn't really stand for perfect health. It actually stands for, in biochemistry, the potential of hydrogen. It's a measurement, it's a scientific measurement where we're actually measuring the concentration of hydrogen ions. And the more hydrogen ions that we concentrate, the more acidic a material or fluid is. The less hydrogen, the more alkaline it is. So there's this wonderful duality going on in life. Opposition in all things that we might learn by our experience. How would we ever understand happiness without sadness? How would we experience what peace means if there was not the duality or the opposite of peace? Hot and cold. We would never understand it. The duality exists that we might learn by our experience. The key then is to maintain balance within the dynamics of the human organism. I believe life as well as death is a choice. There was a scientist by the name of Alexis Carell who received the Nobel Prize. I don't know if you're familiar with this doctor or not. But he studied these cells, uh, particularly not only just human cells, but the cells of a chicken. And he was able to keep a chicken heart alive for over 20 years. Now he received his Nobel Prize for being the father of transplantation. As we know, we donate organs. Those organs are actually then taken and placed in an alkaline environment and maintained indefinitely until a donor can be found and the organ can be then uh, given. Current medical science believes the life expectancy biologically should be about 150 years. We know the ancients lived at least eight, nine, even a thousand years. Did they understand this science? I perceive possibly they did, but of course they lived in a cleaner world. Today our water is toxic, our air is toxic, our food has been manipulated, it is toxic. We live in a soup of electromagnetic radiation that would challenge any human body to maintain its alkalinity and a balance. So let's get to the presentation. Those who think they have not time for bodily exercise will sooner or later have to find time for illness. This is one of the things that I uh, try to encourage people to do on a daily basis, at least an hour, a day. Uh, bodily exercise, our bodies have been designed to, to move. So I'd like to introduce some uh, foundational principles here. After 30 years of research, I learned some basic foundational principles. And I'd like to share those with you this evening. The first one is that the human body is alkaline in its design. All of the body fluids are pH balanced slightly between 7.34, 7.35 to 7.4. All functions of the human organism, though, produce acidic waste products. These acidic waste products, if not properly eliminated through the four channels of elimination, which are respiration, urination, defecation, and what I'm doing right now, perspiration. <laughs> I think all of us are doing that right now. If these waste products are not eliminated, they build up in the connective tissue and into the fatty tissues. They can make us sick and tired. I have suggested that there is only one sickness and there's one disease. This one sickness and one disease is the overacidification of the blood and tissues due to an inverted way of living, eating, and thinking and the body's inability to remove its own metabolic or dietary waste products. The one treatment or the one health, there's one sickness, one health, is managing and maintaining the alkaline design of the human body 
keeping the channels of elimination organ, uh, open, thus not allowing these metabolic or dietary acids to build up that make us sick and tired. I believe the single most important factor in maintaining our health and our energy and fitness is to manage the pH of our blood, our saliva, and our urine. If I was to ask how many here know the pH of their morning urine today, would you be able to say, I know that exactly? What was your morning pH? Seven. Seven, okay. Anybody else? We got one person here that tested their pH. 5.8. Okay, you're a car accident ready to happen. <laughs> uh, ideally, the urine pH should be at 7.2 or greater. When you measure the urine pH, you're actually measuring or testing the pH of the fluids of the body. Because it's the fluids from the tissues that dump into the blood that then are eliminated through urination that you're actually testing. When we test the saliva, we're testing the body's potential for alkalizing. That too should be at least 7.2 or greater. The blood is a lot more narrow in its range. Uh, ideally, blood pH will range from 7.3 to 7.4, but as the blood increases, that, in, that is an indication as the blood pH increases, to a more alkaline state, that indicates tissue acidosis and a risk factor for cancer. If the blood pH is dropping below, that's 7.365, that is referred to decompensated acidosis, and you're on the way out. The body does not have enough alkaline reserves, and when those run out, death is inevitable. Sorry I have to do these individually. So I'm going to make this really simple for you. Because as Einstein said, he said if you can't explain, explain what you're trying to teach simply, then you don't understand it very well. Okay, it starts out with a question. Here is the question. When the fish is sick, what would you do? Would you treat the fish or change the water? Now think about the question. When the fish is sick, what would you do? Would you treat the fish or change the water? How many would change the water? How many would treat the fish? Okay, are you a medical doctor? Okay, just, just, just wondering. Okay. You see? So if the fish is sick, and this is what Alex Carell did, in order to keep the chicken heart alive for 20 years, every 48 hours he would replace the alkaline fluids and refresh those and put it into a new environment. Because cells, as they're living, they're giving off waste products and they pollute the environment. So he had to change it every 48 hours. The ocean, the rivers, the streams are only as healthy. The fish that live in the ocean, rivers and streams, the marine life are only as healthy as the water they swim in. Now you've probably heard of acid rain, right? What is acid rain? It's a variety of different chemicals, uh, one being carbon monoxide, which is being absorbed in the water. It's being absorbed into the water and it's causing a pH reduction in the fluids. In some place, the pH is dropping from its normal 8.3 to 7.2, and within those areas of the ocean where over 5,000 species of marine life used to live, they are all gone. And we know that the coral calcium is being reduced as one of the major elements of neutralizing acids to try to maintain the pH of the ocean but we know it's gradually decreasing. This is the same thing that happens in the human body. When the human body's fluids become acidic, the body will pull calcium ions from the bones, magnesium ions from the muscle, 
in order to raise the pH and maintain that delicate pH of the blood, because that's our life, remember? Life and death is the blood. When it's compromised, then you die. So this is what causes arthritis. It's what causes osteoporosis. It's a depletion of these elements that are pulled in the blood to maintain the delicate pH balance of the fluids of the body. So the human cell is only as healthy as the environment it lives in. So when the fish is sick, what do you do? When the body is sick, what do you do? Do you treat the symptoms or do you change the fluids of the body? It's the same process. So when the fish is sick, just as when our bodies are sick, this is a compromise in the delicate pH balance of the fluids of the body. If we want to maintain good health and longevity, if we will simply manage the fluids of the body, we can then avoid or prevent sickness and disease. Does this make sense to you? All right. It doesn't cost very much either. I actually believe that managing your health should be available to everyone. I truly believe that education rather than medication is the key to some of the health challenges that we're now having around the world. One of the most important things that you can do is change the water that you're drinking. The water that you should be drinking should have a pH of at least 9.5. And the reason for that is it's saturated with electrons or hydrogen ions that will help neutralize the acids of metabolism and also from diet. Our bodies have natural bu buffering systems to protect ourselves from metabolic and dietary acids. So where do these acids come from? Metabolism. So when the body is using energy, life force energy, it produces a chemical waste product. When we eat food, or we take in liquids into the body, also acids are produced. When we exercise, we produce metabolic waste products. You're probably familiar with one of those. Do you remember? Lactic acid. Lactic acid is one of the byproducts of metabolism in the absence of oxygen. Now here's something you don't know, I don't think, maybe some of you do. Glucose is a waste product in the presence of oxygen. So glucose is not a fuel for the body, it's actually a waste product of metabolism. As we manage our diets, we have to be very, very careful in the amount of glucose, dextrose, sucrose, fructose, maltose, anything with OSE on it, because these are the waste products of deterioration or breakdown. These are not the fuels of life, but the waste products of life. Think about this. Our bodies are electrical. They run on electrons, and these electrons are what fuel the body. And the matrix of which these electrons are transported is a matrix of sodium ions, and one of the reasons why our oceans are salted with sodium and why our blood, at the same concentrations of sodium, is also salted with sodium ions. Doctors do know that sodium is so significant and so important and so life-giving and life-saving, but they tell us we should watch it. That if we eat too much salt, it may cause hypertension. It may raise our blood pressure. In reality, that is another medical myth. Sodium ions is the giver of life. It's the matrix of which energy is transported. And it's the foundational element of which alkaline buffers are created. When we're deficient in sodium, there is only one thing that can ensue, and that is 
sickness and disease. It's kind of the way Gatorade first started out. You know, as a young man and uh, participating in, in what was my favorite sport, tennis, I remember, I remember taking salt pills. I remember using sodium and what we refer to as electrolytes to restore those very critical elements to maintain life. Now we see athletes transpiring on the field. On the football field, just recently when I was in Italy, a famous soccer player, football player, dies, a young man. And we ask, how can this happen? And when we understand how important and significant that sodium is, just as important as water, just as important as oxygen, it is always deficient in those who just, before they have some sickness or disease or before death ensues. Acids from thinking is another source of, uh, of acid as well. We don't realize this, but when we are in our thoughts, this requires energy. And when we're using energy, we're pr producing acidic waste products. So our thoughts actually become biology. Acidic waste products are produced through thoughts. You might say we need to think a little bit less. Maybe meditation and prayer is life-saving and life-changing. When we can actually go, go to a place where we have a peace or calmness and our minds are quieted, this is when we're producing less metabolic acidity that can lead to sickness and disease. When cells break down, they produce acids. Bacteria and yeast are products of cellular breakdown and they in themselves do not cause disease but are the evidence of cellular transformation and the breakdown of healthy tissue. I have taught for years now that infection is another medical myth. The bacteria and yeast does not cause disease, but are the evidence of a breakdown of tissue due to a compromise in the delicate alkaline pH of the fluids of the body. You see, the key is to manage the internal environment. As our air is being polluted, as the oceans are becoming acidic from acid rains, as the forests of Denali is evidenced, that our forests are being damaged, life on Terra is being disintegrated with these acids, so we have this same problem from within. Managing the acids of the body, making sure that, that um, we're maintaining that alkaline design. So I've got a question for you. Let's see how you do. What is the major organ or gland responsible for buffering acids of the human body? Who would like to give this a go? A, lungs, B, liver, C, stomach, D, intestines, or E, skin? We have one for lungs. We have, li okay, well liver is a filter organ. A lung is a filter or organ, so it helps to to uh, move acids out, but this gland is responsible, is the main organ for alkalinity. I, I think you're going to be surprised. It's C, it's stomach. Now, if I'm correct, you know what this is going to do, don't you? It means that we're going to have to rewrite all the biology books. I know I. I collected this really cool poster. It's, it's, it's huge. It, on the top it says the digestive system. And I've been meaning to cross it out and call it the alkaline buffering system. And I wanted to explain this to you because I think it's really important. The stomach's main purpose is to produce sodium bicarbonate. There are cells that cover the entire stomach the parental cells or the cover cells. These cover cells pull sodium ions, carbon dioxide, and water from the blood and through chemistry produce sodium bicarbonate. Here's the chemical formula if you want to write it down. 
NaCl plus H2O plus CO2 equals NaHCO3 plus HCl. Now, that chemistry there, what part did you get? You got water, right? Water? Okay, let's talk English, all right? Salt plus water plus carbon dioxide equals sodium bicarbonate plus hydrochloric acid. Now, how did we get so far off the, the, the path of what's really happening in the stomach to actually buy the story or actually believe that the stomach is a digestive organ? Now, I don't want to upset anybody's apple cart here, but what I'm going to suggest to you is to not necessarily think out of the box here, but let's make our box a little bit bigger. And let me say this to you. You cannot produce hydrochloric acid without creating or producing an equal amount of sodium bicarbonate. So where in heaven's name does all the sodium bicarbonate go? And what is left after the food has left the stomach? The only thing that's left falls down in the crypts or the gastric pits of the stomach, which is the hard hydrochloric acid, because acid is molecular heavy, sodium bicarbonate rises to the top to meet the, meet the food, and the purpose of the stomach is to alkalize the food, not digest the food. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is because the number one and number two disease in the world today is indigestion. And the number one over-the-counter drug is being sold, and it's really good for pharmaceutical companies to keep us all confused about this because they're selling billions and billions of dollars of antacids. Now, if the stomach was an organ of digestion, then we wouldn't need any antacids. But it's not. The stomach produces sodium bicarbonate to raise the pH of the food to prepare it to what happens in the small intestine. And you all know what happens in the small intestine. So I'd like to challenge each of you to go home. If you have a computer, go Google this. And you'll learn that the research now has all changed. Very few of you know this. The purpose of the small intestine, what happens there, is to produce embryonic stem cells. It takes place in the crypts of the small intestine. And it takes place at a pH of 8.4. 8.4. Not 1.5 or 3. You see, if food is coming out of the stomach acidic, you're going to damage your gallbladder, you're going to damage the, the duodenum, you're going to damage the pancreas, and you're going to burn the intestinal villi, and then you're going to die. And the body's not going to do that. So it does everything, it, do, it says, as soon as that food comes out of the stomach, that pancreas is squirting sodium bicarbonate on the food to raise the pH up to a pH of 8.4. Ideally, in the small intestine, food has to be at 8.4 in a liquid state, and the color should be green. Now, that is the focal point of embryonic stem cell production. Now, when you're starving to death and you've ruined your gut, it takes place in the bone or the liver. It's called reverse transformation. That's why when people get sick, they lose weight because their gut stops producing stem cells, which then go into embryonic, uh, into erythroblasts, and then to red blood cells. And the interesting thing is, is the studies that were done in 1952 on blood production were done on studies starving chickens, pigeons and rabbits and if you don't have any food in your gut you cannot produce stem cells the body goes into reverse transformation and our your bones become blood your muscle becomes blood and this is what happens when people get sick they start losing weight it's called reverse transformation you're losing the weight because the body still needs blood to stay alive so it converts its own body cells to blood when I'm working with my patients, the key to restoring health, especially if I'm dealing with bone cancer, is not through bone marrow transplantations. I know that the focal point of bone cancer is in the gut. 
I know this person has destroyed the health of the core and the intestinal villi, which has a surface area of over 7,200 square feet, that's the size of a tennis court, has been compromised, has been congested. And there's 10 foods that I recommend you never eat unless you want to compromise this part of your body. You probably like to hear those, huh? <laughs> but I've got as many foods you should eat to build blood and to build embryonic cells too as well. You probably like to know those two as well too, right? Okay. So hopefully you're learning something you've never heard before. You're learning something new. When you realize that the ideal pH of the stomach is not 1.5 to 3, but it's actually in the high 7s and 8s, and that the stomach is producing sodium bicarbonate, and then when you put food in your mouth, the only instrument you have to digest food is your teeth because once you swallow it, the food's on its own to digest from the inside out. If you don't liquefy your food or puree your food through mastication, so if you're eating a piece of carpet or a piece of chicken, whatever it may be, I can promise you the carpet doesn't break down any easier than a piece of beef, chicken, pork, or fish. It may just taste a little bit better. So Sam goes, well, what if, you're, what if I'm you know, not a vegetarian, I'm not a vegan, I'm not an alkalarian? Dr. Young, you've said that, that alkalarians can have some fish, more so for the oil than anything else. But we're talking about perfect health here, aren't we? We're not talking about, well, just mediocre health or average health or good health. We're talking about extraordinary health here. We're talking about perfect health. And I wanted to give you the recipe for perfect health, not just mediocre health. Because we, for the same formula to produce perfect health, I've got the formula for producing colon cancer and diabetes. And I know how to do those things too as well. Because these are the types of patients that come to me. So we know the pathway to all of this. Animal protein does not liquefy. It does not digest. The fibers are too difficult. It'll stay within your system. It rots, it putrefies, it activates the stomach. The salivary glands tries to alkalize that food by secreting sodium bicarbonate to raise the pH. There's no way to break these fibers down. What you need to do is get a blender and put it in a blender and juice it. So if you're going to have fish or chicken or pork, you know, and never pork, I mean, and never chicken. Chicken is foul, isn't it? <coughs> I mean, I didn't name it that. But that's what they call it. But it's the fastest way to get sick, and it's making our children sick, and it's probably the number one food that's causing the, f the fastest leading disease across the world is eating chicken. Chicken and diabetes, I say out of the same sentence. I mean, kids, you wouldn't believe it. When we start doing colon hydrotherapy, it's amazing. We're pulling eggs out, we're pulling chicken out. It's amazing what comes out of these kids. It, it just, it's stuck there, and, and some of these kids are underweight. You wonder, where's this stuff coming from? And yet, our children are sick because they've compromised the delicate pH balance of the internal fluids of the body, and they've damaged the root system of our body. Now, that's an interesting thing. Plants have roots. Trees have roots. Human bodies have roots. The root system of the human body is the appendages in the small intestine. These appendages become damaged. When they're damaged, we cannot produce blood, and we cannot produce blood, we cannot produce perfect health in a healthy body. We throw our bodies in reverse transformation. Your health and the quality of your health is in direct relationship to the health of your core. That's just the gut telling me this. I mean, I know, it's, it's just a gut feeling. You know what I'm saying? You probably didn't know this, that you have more brain cells in your core than you do in your head. That the primary brain of the human body is not here, it's actually here. 
And then when we have cravings, that's not coming from the head brain, it's coming from the gut because we've compromised that environment with what we eat, what we drink. And once again, that's my gut telling me that this is true. Your core is the primary brain. The head brain is secondary. If we have someone who has brain cancer, the focal point of brain cancer is the core. If we have someone that has breast cancer, the focal point of breast cancer is the core. If we have a child with type 1 diabetes, the, the core is the focal point of this condition. Everything begins in the health of the core. The environment of that core should be at least 8.4. Everything we eat, everything we drink, everything we think affects the health of the core. Now how do you know if your core is healthy? I have slides for this, but I've been frustrated with moving these slides around. So, I mean, we do, we do ultrasounds. We do thermography. Why? Because it's, there's no radiation involved. We do live dry blood cell analysis where we can actually see the condition of the core. I like the thermography and ultrasound because I, it's non-invasive versus, let's say, a colonoscopy, and, and you really don't see the small intestine. I mean, they do have technology now where you can actually small, swallow a very small camera, and it'll travel down and take pictures of your whole alimentary canal. It's very expensive, and it's unnecessary. With one drop of blood, I can tell the health of the core with just one, blood, blood, with one drop of blood, because the blood never lies and everything is encrypted in the blood. I'll show you some patterns here in a minute. Let's go on here. Am I, am, am I running out of time, by the way? Ten minutes. Ten minutes? All right. I just got started. I'm going to give it to you. I said that there was one sickness, one disease, and one treatment. There's actually seven stages of acidosis. How do we know we're in acidosis? How do we know that we have, uh, you know, congested or congestion within, within our connective tissues, within our lymphatic systems, within our circulatory systems? One, innervation. Two, sensitivities and irritation. Three, secretions, mucus buildup, catarrh. Four, inflammation. It's impossible to have any pain without an equal amount of acidity. For acid is pain and pain is acid. Induration is hardening of the tissues. Ulceration and then finally degeneration is the final stage of the one sickness and one disease, which is the overacidification of the blood and tissues. The body does everything to neutralize this excess acidity. When the four channels of elimination are blocked, it will retain water. It will hold on to fat. Somebody says, come, well, you know, we have people come to the ranch and say, well, I'd like to lose some weight. And I says, well, you'll lose the weight as you lose the acidity because the body does not drop weight until you drop the acid. So fat is protective. The body retains fat as protection against acidic waste products that have not been properly eliminated. If you're overweight, love your fat. Be grateful for it. The body is working perfect. Your decision making is not working very perfect. How about this one? The body creates cholesterol. Now there's this saying that there's bad cholesterol and good cholesterol. I would like to suggest to you there's no such thing as bad or good. It's all good cholesterol. The body uses cholesterol to neutralize or buffer metabolic acid. And when our cholesterol is high, that's the body at perfect, in perfect harmony trying to manage the acid load from your acidic dietary and lifestyle choices. You want to lower cholesterol? Then you have to get on what I call the RAD diet or the alkaline diet. It's a reduced acid diet. I told you one of the foods, right? Chicken, pork, beef, any fowl, right? Turkey. Why? Because they don't eliminate their own waste products. They only have one channel of elimination. They're more likely to absorb their own waste products, but that's what makes them so juicy. <laughs> if I was to show you the acids of a chicken or the juice that comes off, you would be a born-again non-chicken eater. <laughs> 
Um, it's just not a pretty sight. And I can't imagine eating eggs. Eggs contain 38,500,000 pathological microorganisms which pollute the blood in a way that looks like a war zone. They activate the, it activates the immune system. It's amazing that the body even can sustain or such an assault as just eating one single egg. But I can't imagine eating a chicken's period either, let alone the acids that come from the tissues of these foul animals. They are filthy and they should not be ingested. Other foods, vinegar. Any fermented foods, soy, peanuts, corn, all dairy products. Dairy contains lactose in concentrated form which produces the cancer acid, lactic acid. If you want breast cancer, eat more dairy. If you want prostate cancer, eat more dairy products. It's the fastest pathway to it. These are the ways in which the body protects itself, leaching minerals to neutralize acids in the blood. <coughs> Medical science precedes tumors as the cancer, but the tumor is nothing more than an encapsulation of spoiled cells. There's only two types of blood, healthy and unhealthy. What produces healthy blood is very, very specific. It's very simple. It's been outlined all throughout the scriptures. <coughs> and I didn't realize this until later. I think I need something to drink. I have a drinking problem. <laughs> it's water. The body forms tumors in order to encapsulate cells that are breaking down in order to protect healthy tissue. The tumor is like a scab. If you cut yourself, the blood flows to the cut. The scab becomes the new tissue. Same things happen with tumors. The body encapsulates cells that have been spoiled or broken or damaged in order to protect the healthy tissue. I love this uh, stat. This was uh, published in 1986 in the Lancet. This is why Lipitor is one of the number one drugs sold in the world today. Because we have this false belief that as cholesterol goes up, the risk for coronary heart disease goes up. You've been told this, correct? Okay, now I'll show you the truth. As cholesterol goes up, your risk for coronary heart disease goes down. The higher your cholesterol, the lower your risk for heart disease. You see, the problem is not the cholesterol. The problem is acidic lifestyle and dietary choices. So the body is going to defend itself to protect the tissue and to maintain the delicate pH balance of the blood and the interstitial fluids. It does that by producing cholesterol to bind that. This is the same study. This is the first 10 years that's the second 10 years. Same study, same group of people. You know about this. Nobody wants you to know about this. Why? Because what you learn from the continuation of the study, which continues to go on, is you don't need Lipitor. You don't need Bayer Aspen, which increases your risk for cancer by 80%. Ipiprofen increases your risk for cancer by 50%. And yet your doctor is saying, get off salt, take some aspirin, and oh, by the way, here's some Lipitor to bring down your cholesterol. <clears throat> now, while your health is being destroyed by your doctor, it would be really wonderful if somehow this truth was expressed in an open forum and that everyone could hear about it. This is what acid crystals look like in the blood. That's a sulfuric acid crystal from the ingestion of what? Chicken. Here's another acid from dairy, lactic acid. Erotic acid from the lack of oxygen. These are just some case studies. I'm going to briefly go over them. Well, 
we need to move through this because I'm running out of time. Maybe I should share some of this tomorrow too. Are you coming back? Yes. Would you you want to hear more of this? Yes. How many would like to hear more of this? I guess they're coming back. Well, you haven't thrown anything at me yet. But I find it all very interesting. And, and I have to be truly open with you. I'm totally surprised as well. Because this information is not available in, in, in medical schools or any texts. And the reason why is because I had to figure it out. And the only way I was able to figure it out is from folks like you and asking questions. And after looking at over 500,000 samples of blood and over 40,000 patients, asking what are you eating, what are you drinking, because I wanted to know why your blood looks the way it looks, and we start shifting the diet, we start shifting the blood, and then what happens? We get a different expression from the genes, and we end up with different symptomologies. Now the body is expressing health and fitness rather than sickness and disease. You see, we don't need national health insurance. What we need is education. We need to learn how our bodies work and how to take care of them. Why would you need health insurance if you're never going to get sick? Just something to think about. Did you realize that uh, the budget committee for, the, for our government just released how much our budget for health is for this year? $850 billion. And they expect it to double. It's going to be $1.5 trillion by the year 2022. Do you think we have a problem here? Yes. You see, we've got to get out of the sickness business and start teaching people how to take care of their bodies. Well, it's interesting when you find out that orange juice is more acidic and harmful to you than a glass of green juice. You stop drinking orange juice and apple juice and you start drinking spinach, parsley, celery, and cucumber juice. Yes. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Green. It's green. And as Kermit the Frog said, it's not that easy being green. <laughs> you know, because people are looking for what? They're looking for sugar. You're better off drinking your urine than drinking coffee, beer, 7-Up, Red Bull Energy, which has a pH of 3.26 on a scale from 0 to 14, 7 being the midpoint. Anything below 7 is acidic. Anything above 7 is alkaline. You can see that Red Bull Energy is not an energizing drink. It actually is a stimulant that when you drink it, the body perceives it as a poison and reacts to it, and that's the energy you're feeling, is the response to the stimulation. Same thing happens with beer, same thing happens with coffee. There's nothing good about coffee. It's one of my top ten foods never to eat. Alcohol is in there too as well, because it doesn't contribute any life force energy. It's, 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 it's poison, it's dead. It contributes no hydrogen ions. It contributes no electrons. All it does is cause the body to respond to the poison as if you were bitten by a snake and the venom goes into the blood, the body has to react to that. You go into an adrenal response. The same thing happens when you drink coffee, when you drink tea, green or black, when you drink alcohol, when you drink soda pop, when you drink orange juice, when you drink apple juice, this is what happens. And the thing is, is it's impossible biochemically to over-alkalize. It takes 20 parts of alkalinity or sodium bicarbonate to neutralize one part carbonic acid, which is a waste product of metabolism, to maintain the pH at 7.365. So it's impossible to overhydrate your body if you, or over-alkalize. If you do, then what you do is reverse the aging process. So the promise of this program is not only do you restore your health, but you start turning the clock back and you start looking younger. You start feeling younger because you're focused on the most important organ in the human body. Not the symptom, but the most important human, human organ of the body, 
to maintain, and that's the blood. That's where the life is. The key is the number one production of the body, which is the number one buffer, sodium bicarbonate, it's produced by the stomach. These are other buffers which the body doesn't. This is why a lot of people are anemic, because the body's produ uh, taking hemoglobin. That's why hemoglobin drops when you're sick. The body's using sodium bicarbonate and the heme of the blood to maintain the alkaline design of the, the fluids of the body. So tomorrow, I guess you're all going to have to come back. You gave us seven, okay. Oh, thank you so much. You're too. I, I apologize. You're so you're so kind. I'm going to. Yeah. These these are the these are seven things. Uh, excuse me, fifteen things that I recommend that you consider doing. Uh, these are the first ones are diagnostic, live and dry blood cell analysis. Thermographies and ultrasounds, which is whole body thermography, whole body ultrasounds. A CBC chemistry and cancer antigen tests. Then we get into super alkalizing the blood and tissues, alkalizing food and drink, alkalizing exercises and breathing exercises, and I can show you those two as well tomorrow. Alkalizing nutritional supplements, emotional and spiritual reconnection, setting goals and writing them down, getting the lymphatic system moving again, so massage, Infrared sauna, alkalizing salt baths, colon hydrotherapy, alkalizing nutritional IVs, and then proving respiration, nebulizing, alkalizing uh, antioxidants. The four key aspects of the pH miracle program is one, open up the four channels of elimination. What are those? Urination, perspiration, defecation, and respiration. Restore health to the intestinal villi. That's our root system. If that's healthy, we then can produce healthy embryonic cells. And then what happens is we start building healthy blood. Because when we're building healthy blood, the blood is the foundational cell that becomes bone, muscle, or other tissues. So this program is not about how much carbohydrate, protein, or fat you're eating. It's all geared towards are you building healthy blood? Because muscles are made from blood, bones are made from blood. Livers are made from blood. Skin is made from blood. And then hyperperfusing the tissues with alkalizing compounds. This is what healthy intestinal villi look like. This is after they've been destroyed with an acidic lifestyle and diet. When food comes out of the stomach into the small intestine, what should it be? It should be liquid, and it should be green, and it should have a pH of at least 8.4. This is why the three most important uh, tools you should have in your kitchen is one, a blender, like a Vitamix, two, a juicer, and three, a water ionizer. Because this is pretty much going to be the instruments that are going to help to alkalize and puree or liquefy the food. This is what healthy blood looks like. This is what cancerous blood looks like. So here's my blood. Here's your blood. Any questions? <laughs> Just kidding. So healthy blood, cancerous blood. This is called the unchanged blood test. If you're not producing healthy blood, how can you produce healthy muscles and bones and organs? You can't. Your organs are only as healthy as the blood, and the blood is only as healthy as the core, and the core is only as healthy as what you're eating, what you're drinking. And, of course, what you're thinking. Uh, these are just some more studies. Lots of studies on the importance of an alkaline lifestyle and diet. Now, here's a revelation for you. Cancer is not a cellular problem. It's an environmental problem. Cancer is not a cell. It's a liquid. Cancer is actually a verb, not a noun. Cancer is what happens to a cell. So there is a healthy cell and an unhealthy cell, or a healthy cell and a cancerous cell. The cancer is in the fluids of the body. This is what is eluding cancer research. They're studying the cells. I've studied the environment around the cells. Remember when the fish is sick, what would you do? You treat, you change the water, because it's the water that's changing the cells that gives rise to the cancerous tissue. 
So cancer is a liquid. And the beautiful thing about this is, is the war is over. We now know what causes cancer and we also know how to cure it. Cancer is curable now. But you have to understand what it is. You cannot be treating the symptoms of a tumor or the tissues not realizing the tumor will return or even the treatments that are addressing the tumor will end up damaging your heart, your liver, your pancreas, your bowels. And now it's called metastatic stage four cancer. As if cancer is traveling, the cells. Or maybe we have phantom cancer cells traveling throughout our body that need to be eradicated with some chemotherapy or radiation. When we understand that cancer is a metabolic or dietary acid that affects the cells, then we have to manage and maintain the alkaline design of the fluids of the body. Here's a guy that has cancer or did have cancer. Look at the blood. In 90 days, this is before, this is after. Before, after. But it's not about the anatomy that's changing. It's also about the physiology, the chemistry, and the anatomy of the blood too as well that's changing. From an acidic cellular state to an alkaline state. You see how nice those cells are, round and symmetrical, even in color, even in shape, even in size. Look at the way the blood's coagulating. Here it, you've got these great lakes of white proteins. Here they're gone. Cancer, no cancer. Bell palsy, before and after, 30 days. Before and after, the skin, and eczema. Look at all the white blood cells. They're gone. Why do white cells come out? Because they come out to clean up the environment. So this is what healthy blood looks like when it coagulates. This is what cancerous blood looks like. So in every condition of colon cancer, this is the pattern I see. And the nice thing about this is when we're seeing this, we're seeing this in the early stages rather than just down the road when you're actually diagnosed and you have to have part of your colon removed. So these types of tests are preventive and they should be affordable and available to everyone. Diabetes, where does it start? Starts in the bowels. This is before and after. Insulin dependent diabetes is curable. You just under, have to understand what it is and what causes it. Metastatic bone cancer. Here's the blood. Here's the bowels. Here's the PET scan. Cancer down the spinal column. In the heart. In the lungs. On the pelvis. In the kidneys. Thir 90 days later. <clears throat> this is uh, uh, SAR, uh, SARS or MRSA or squamous cell carcinoma before, after, five days. This stuff happens fast. When you understand it's not about the tissue, it's about the environment around the tissue. This is squamous cell carcinoma. It's wrapped around the carotid artery. You cannot perform surgery on this type of a cancer before and after. Well, what happens is acidic lifestyle and dietary choices. These are breasts of a woman who has high estrogen. These are what breast implants look like. But look at these numbers. Acids are the, are the cause of cancer. 90 days, two cells. One year, 16 cells. This is when we pick it up. I pick up cancer in the body at 256 cells. Now we're, not cause, we're cancerous cells, not cancer cells, but cancerous cells caused by an acidic environment. Look what happens. You have to wait till seven years later with 268 million cells. Now it's detectable by a mammogram. And it's too late. All of this is preventable without radiation. Here is a condition, and I'm going to end with this one, okay? I'll, I promise. Okay, I'm going to end with this. Are you familiar with an inflammatory ductal cell carcinoma? There's no treatment for it. If you're diagnosed and you're a woman, that what they tell you is, get your affairs in order. We're going to do surgery, we're going to do radiation, and we're going to do chemotherapy. There is no treatment for this cancer. It is fast growing. It overtakes the body immediately. I've had three cases 
of inflammatory ductal cell carcinoma. Why not more? I only take what comes to me. We have 100% success in reversing this condition, which has no treatment. Inflammatory ductal cell carcinoma. This is a woman. That's the tumor right there, using a technique called thermography. You can actually see the size of the tumor, and you can see the appendages or blood going into the tumor. This is one week after treatment, two weeks after treatment, three weeks after treatment, four weeks after treatment, five weeks after treatment, six weeks, seven. Look at the breast tissues, what's happening. This is what I call a pH miracle. And what is a pH miracle? A pH miracle is a natural phenomenon between what? The cause and effect relationship. This is what Jesus was doing. He understood miracles because he understood the natural phenomenon between cause and effect. We call it miracles. This is a miracle, but we understand the cause and effect relationship. And once you understand the cause and effect relationship, then you can develop a protocol to reverse the condition. This is what's absent in current medical science. So, I'm always excited to share this with people. And the reason why is because you can live without food for 40 days. You can live without water for four days. You can live without oxygen for four minutes. But you can only live without hope for about four seconds. And when people hear this message, it gives them exactly what they need, and that is the hope that there is a way to restore health and vitality and perfect health to the body again. That I share with you. If you want to know more about PH Miracle, visit our booth back here. Our latest book, The PH Miracle, Revised and Updated. It should be really called the end of all sickness and disease. I hope you'll pick up one. We've only got a few copies of it. Thank you so much for allowing me to share my message with you. Thank you. This is Danny Vieira, Director of Modern Mana and Bella Vita Lifestyle Center. I am happy to announce the launch of RISEN, our new school of natural healing and health evangelism. RISEN, an acronym for Remedial and Integrated School of Evangelism and Naturopathy, offers training to become a certified natural hygiene coach. Learn how you can operate your own lifestyle education home or successfully guide yourself and others to proactive and independent long-lasting health. For more information, go to www.modernmana.org.